Praise the Lord. Welcome once again to Ridgely Ministries and our Wednesday Words for Life Bible study. I'm Pastor Patrick. And I'm Lady Takesha. And again, it is an honor that you would join us in our home for this week's Bible study. We are continuing in the book of Revelation, but before we get started, let's open in a word of prayer. Gracious Lord, our eternal God, we thank you and we praise you for another day, O oh God. We thank you that you are King of kings and Lord of lords Hallelujah. and that you still sit on the throne. And Lord, as we're going into this Bible study to learn more about you, about the things that are to come, and even more about ourselves and what you ask of us, God, we ask for understanding and clarity and um, just give us a deeper understanding and a, a new revelation, a fresh revelation yes, of your word in the name of Jesus. And we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So again, this is the revelation of Jesus Christ. And we have gone all the way through chapters 1 through 8. And so today we're just going to focus on chapter 9. This is part 2 of the trumpet judgments. Last week we talked about uh, judgments 1 through 4. And so this week we'll be talking about judgments 5 through 6. But before we uh, start there... I always like to preface our Bible study with the importance of why we are studying Revelation. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me first go, I have to do this always because it's a blessing unto me as well. Uh, Revelation, the first chapter, verses 3 says, Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at mm -hmm. hand. So um, we're not just reading it, but we are hearing it and we are um, obeying it and we are um, just just grabbing hold of the prophecies that are in this book because it's speaking to us right in this day and time but also preparing us so that we will be the rapture church that we need to be the rapture church and that we need to make sure that we are living a life that is pleasing unto God so revelation it also is not just really focusing on the things to come because it is about the things to come. But like I said, this is um, our escape clause. Yeah. This is what we, God is saying, okay, this is what's going to happen in the world, but I'm going to give you a way of escape because I must judge sin. I must judge the wickedness that is in this world. Don't be deceived. Mm -hmm. And I hope you stay with us throughout this Bible study today. But don't be deceived by what man is saying. They can promise you that things will get better. But our Bible says it is not going to get better. So no matter who is in the White House, no matter who you have voted for to promise you that things will get better, no, things are only going to get worse. Our Bible says it. But again, we have the escape clause. We have that get out of jail free card. We have that um, we can escape these judgments and this great tribulation that is going to come on the earth. Look, we see the wickedness increasing in our land mm -hmm. and people, politicians can make promises all they want and promise that our economy is going to be better or you're going to have better health care right. or that you're going to have more food on your table or a house to live in. But guess what? All this thing is going to go fall, fall. You know, the Bible says don't fret. Um, and when wick, uh, the wicked right. um, are prospering, That's it right. said because they will soon be That's cut right. off. And I just want to appeal mm -hmm. to the church. Church, don't get caught up in this world system. The world loves its own. And what they are doing right now is building up their own empire to defy the living God. So please don't get caught up in that. That's don't right. be caught up in the promises of unity. And no, we're going to be even more divided. It, it, we're not going to be unified as a people. The only way we can be unified is as Christians Amen. under the banner of holiness and under the banner of Jesus Christ. So please keep that in mind as we're going into chapter 9. So get your Bibles, open up your Bibles to Revelation, and we're going to start at the first verse of the ninth chapter. Chapter 9, verse 1 says, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. So here's the very first verse. We see now this trumpet is sound, trumpet number one is sound, and there is a star that falls from heaven. Now, this is not a meteorite or this is not a shooting star because it gives this star a persona. It, may, it calls it a hymn. 
and he was given the key to the and to him was given the key to the bottomless pit. And so we know that um, in the Greek, the actual, it wasn't fall. It actually, the Greek um, derivative of this was fallen. So we know this is a fallen angel. Mm -hmm. This is not an angel sent from God. This is actually a fallen angel who has been given access to this bottomless, bottomless pit. And not only given access, but to open it up and what is going to come. So let's first talk about this bottomless pit. This bottomless pit is a place that the uh, many of the fallen angels at the beginning when they fell and they were deceived by Lucifer or Satan and they were deceived by him, many came down and were actually sealed. They did some things they had no business doing. And if you really want to know about that, you can read in the book of Genesis when the sons of God came down and um, saw the daughters of men and they had relations with them that... Some of them, because of everything that what they were doing, that God sealed them in the earth, the physical earth, until the day of judgment. This is not a supernatural place. This is actually, they are bound mm. in the pit that is on the earth. So this angel, now the question is, is this angel Satan or is there another angel? I like to believe that um, Satan is already preoccupied doing other things with the Antichrist and deceiving the nations and operating his one world um, government. That this is another um, angel that is a fallen angel that is one of the fallen ones that has been given access to open up this pit. That's right. Because Satan's not omnipresent. He's not, He's omnipresent, not omnipresent. Right. So he can't be everywhere at the same time. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, and how, this bottom of this pit, if you go over to Jude the um, sixth verse, and it says, and the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode, mm -hmm. he has reserved an everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. So we know that, and I, I like to say that there are actually what I, several judgments, but I want to focus on two main judgments. Mm -hmm. um, there is the judgment that is going to come on all the fallen angels at the end. So many have been sealed in this bottomless pit mm -hmm. until that day of judgment. But there are some who have been sealed and they're going to be released, as we're going to talk about in chapter 9, that they're going to be released for the judgment on the earth. Mm -hmm. So when it says that the judgment of the great day, um, some are going to be kept until and some will be released for this judgment that we're going to talk about in chapter 9. So here there's this bottomless pit in the earth that the, um, this angel or this fallen one has been given access to this bottomless pit. And he's going to open it up and you're going to now see what comes out of it. Let's go to verse 2. Verse 2 says, And he opened the bottomless pit and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Verse 3 says, And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when it striketh the man. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. So here we have verses 2 through 6, These this the effects of this open pit. So this abyss that is been there reserved. This is the incarceration place, the jail mm. of these fallen ones, that it is opened up and then out of it comes first smoke. And when the smoke comes up, it darkens not only the sun, but it also darkens the air. Now keep in mind when we were talking about the earlier judgment, Trumpy mm -hmm. judgment, where it said a third of the sun will be smoke smitten or darkened and a third of the moon and a third of the stars. So they had to experience darkness at that time. So now here's another type of um, darkness that is going to come. But this is coming from smoke from the earth. And I, 
um, I was reading a commentator how he was talking about um, the environmentalists. They're going to have a stroke from this I one. You, you, you're complaining about the ozone layer and CFCs and, right. and smog and things like that. Guess what? They're not going to be able to handle. Uh, what you going to do, picket hell? Are you going to picket the demons? And, um, are you going to march and riot against... <laughs> <laughs> you go, are you going to talk about climate change to these demons um, that when this smoke comes up, this is the, the filthy and the wretchedness and the foulness that is going to precede what's coming up next. Right. So it's like the precursor, like it's going to be so bad coming up, the dark and everything, but forget about that. Guess what's coming after that? But what I um, like about this, um, let me back up before I say what I like about this, what's coming up after that is these locust-like demons. Right. They're not actual locusts. They're not insects or uh, creatures um, of the earth. These are the demons that have been bound in the earth until the day of judgment. And they're going to come out like a horde and they're going to flow out. And the Bible says that they're given the power of scorpions. And um, which when you typically, if you get stung by a scorpion, you won't die. But it is a very painful. I've never been stung but i've read up on it and it's mm -hmm. a very painful mm -hmm. thing to go through most of the times you will not die so they've given power of scorpions to sting man to cause create create great pain and chaos but it they're not given power to kill them so that lets us know god is still in control he's still in he's still he, they even though they want to because you can imagine demons being bound for thousands of years are very angry they have not had access to do what they always wanted to do when they fell down from their um, former state, when they fell from their glory. And so they are angry, they are frustrated, they are pent up violence, all the wickedness, the, everything you can imagine that is in a demon has been bound in him and pent up and he can't, there is no release. So now there's a release and he's coming out, but they still can only operate by the authority of God because he's still in control. How do we know that? And the scripture says, command them not to hurt the grass or the earth because demons are at this point, they don't care. They want to destroy everything, anything that can harm God's creation. Mm -hmm. Both man, beast, and the earth, they're going. They want to run, um, wreak havoc, and run rampant. But he tells them, "You will not hurt the grass or the earth, but only mankind who were not sealed by God." And so, remember, we were talking about the whole hundred and forty-four thousand that was sealed. But also, keep in mind, every believer that is now being converted, um, coming to Christ during the tribulation period, are also sealed as well God. by God. So. None of the Christians can be touched by these demons. And they know, um, as much as they would love to go after these Christians first, anybody that is redeemed by God, you see that God said, no, you cannot touch them at all. And then on top of that, you're going to hit everybody who is rebelling against God. And they're gladly doing that, stinging them. But it's going to be such a bad sting that um, these people are going to want to die. Want to die. They're going to want to die, but the scripture says death takes a holiday. So they're going to be crying out and saying, please, please let me die. And death's going to be like, no. Nope. Now death has to obey God. And this is the very first time that we see death actually not operating, doing his job. Mm -hmm. He takes a vacation. Never in history that we've heard about this, but here it is. They're seeking death but they cannot find it. And I thought it was so interesting that um, um, not only could they not find it, um, you wouldn't even be able to kill yourself. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't even be able to commit suicide because, of course, if this thing is so bad, here you're talking about the anxiety, you're talking about the mental anguish, you're talking about the pain. People, and right now, um, people are... Um, what is it called? Mercy killing and their mm -hmm. um, euthanasia. euthanasia. They're, they're giving themselves over to euthanasia because they don't want to go through cancer or they don't want to go through the pain. They don't want to have that, um, that lesson uh, value of life or they, you know, they want to, if it starts to decrease, they say, look, I'd rather end it, whether by suicide or assisted suicide. So you can imagine when this thing is coming on the land and coming on the people uh, who don't know Christ, who refuse to serve him, they're going to want to even commit suicide. Um, Pastor, as you're talking, the one thing that just keeps reoccurring in my mind as we hear what is in store for the earth is that if you've never believed in the supernatural, if you've never believed mm. in angels and demons, 
There's more than enough information and evidence in the Bible for you to realize that this cannot be it. This is not it, number one. The tangible world is only a very small mm -hmm. portion of what we consider reality. The spiritual world is reality. And we see, thank God for the rapture and the saints that will be already enjoying the, 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 the marriage supper of the Lamb and, and, and celebrating God, mm -hmm. you know, during this time. Uh, but here we see clear evidence that there is a battle. There is real, true evil that you have not yet seen unleashed on the earth. So if you don't believe in angels or demons, you have to go back to the Bible and see. Don't let anybody uh, trick you out of that to think that there's such a thing as coincidence or karma or anything like that. No, it's sowing and reaping and there are mm -hmm. angels and demons. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Here's what Ephesians 6 says. It says uh, that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Now, this is before the rapture mm -hmm. and it's clearly mm -hmm. going to be after the rapture that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against uh, principalities, against uh, the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, against powers. We're going to be, uh, these are the real uh, um, agents of the enemy that are coming against the people of God. So please, ladies and gentlemen, understand that the spiritual world is a very real world and you cannot live in the things that are temporary and the things that are seen because there is an unseen world and mm -hmm. we see it unfolded in the, in the book of Revelation uh, more so than any other place because everybody's all together. We see the angels uh, that are carrying out the judgments of God. We see the demons who are still under the control mm -hmm. of our living God. Uh, so I would just recommend one, that you make sure your theology makes room for angels and demons and, and the reality of them. And two, the power of our God who still has control over all of these things because he is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is the God who has everything in and under control. And even demons are subject to his command. And even death oh, yes. is subject to his command. <laughs> so death, can you can't even escape this judgment or the wrath of God. You cannot. By killing yourself. Now even God saying, I'm not even going to let you escape. You wanted to reject me, but there will be no, oh, no escape. No, no. The faces. only escape is right. through me, through the precious blood right. of Jesus Christ. So here we are. Death takes a holiday. Um, but let's talk about these locust-like demons. Mm -hmm. um, verses 7 <laughs> through 10 that gives us a good description of what they're going to look like this is the stuff of nightmares mm -hmm, right here mm -hmm. listen to this verse 7 says and the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle and on their heads as it were uh, are crowns of gold and their faces were like the faces of men okay and they had hair as the hair of women all right but then their teeth <laughs> were as the teeth of lions and they had breastplates. Paint the picture in your mind. They had breastplates, as it were, breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running into battle. And they had tails like the scorpions, unto scorpions that were sting that was that were stings in their tails. And their power was to hurt men for five years months and it just also gives us the length of time oh this was going to go on so you would think oh wow 24 hour onslaught of these demons no for five, five months, months five months of constant stinging of attacking five months of no death five months death is on a five month uh sabbatical oh uh and so this is how bad it is but let's look at the details of these demons because mm -hmm. again these are not um, creatures of the oh. earth. This is not, these are actual demons. So you can imagine where people uh, who are um, Satan worshipers or are looking for the manifestation of demons and people who worship different idols and are looking for the mat witches and warlocks mm. who are really looking for the manifestation of demons. Well, uh, be careful what you ask for That's because right. they will fully manifest themselves during this time. So um, starting at the top, it said uh, that these uh, locusts or these locust-like demons were uh, had bodies that looked like horses prepared for battle. Mm -hmm. And that speaks to their strength and their speed. So they'd be extremely strong um, demons because we know demons are supernatural. They're spiritual. Um, 
spiritual entities that have strength beyond that of normal man, but also the speed of them. If you think about a horse, a horse is very fast, so they're not just going to be lingering or dilly-dallying from one person. They're going to go out very quickly, and five months, they're just going to be laying waste to uh, everybody all around. And then it says they have the crowns on their head, golden crowns on their head. And crown speaks to both royalty, authority, and conquerors. And when I say about royalties, this lets you know that these are demons, are fallen angels. Because the fallen angels are the fallen sons of God. Mm -hmm. At one point, they were, they were royalty. They were the sons of God. They were in heaven at the throne. They were around the throne. So these are um, anyone that is son of a king or son of God is considered royalty. So it lets you know that these are fallen angels. Are they still royalty? No, but they still have that appearance of someone mm -hmm. um, of, of that is created by God and had that connection with God at some time. they just been perverted by their own pride and lust and greed and things like that and sin. And it's intimidation, too. Mm -hmm. I think that's also a sign yes. of intimidation. When you see someone who was royalty or is, it has to make you take a step back. You mm -hmm. have to admire at the same time mm -hmm. that, you terif that you're terrified of these things. But there's an imposing... Mm -hmm. uh, kind of uh, intimidation that comes with you're being conquered and there is no doubt in your mind in, that you are being uh, completely overrun by these things that are coming out of the earth. Amen. So they, they are conquerors. They are coming to conquer. Uh, then they have the faces of men. That speaks to let you know that these just not mindless creatures no, 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 that no. are going out and um, being led out. Exactly. They have intelligence. So they so you think you might be able to hide in a bunker or you'll be so you hide in a bunker and they're just gonna be waiting for you to come out mm -hmm. and they're gonna get you or they're gonna find a way to get into the bunker to come get That's you terrifying. yeah uh, <laughs> you, you think you can hide out in the woods no they're gonna find you because they are intelligent they're not animals they're not um mind, like i say mindless animals they're Faces of men, so they can be extremely intelligent and know how to get at you. Then they said they have the hair of women. And I thought that was interesting because it speaks of, when you talk about the hair of women, you talk about something that is attractive. Mm -hmm. and But it brings to my mind like a harlot. Where, um, where many of these who are worship, uh, worship demons or, or Satanists and things like that, they will immediately look at these and be like, oh, praise Satan or whatever. And, and they're going to be like, oh, whatever. We're going to sting you too. Sting and so them. they're going to be looking, coming at you. So you can imagine them bearing down for people who say, no, we worship Satan. And they're like, and because they're going to look attractive to them. Mm. They're going to have this long flowing hair and um, this picturing of attractiveness. And, um, but they're going to be like harlots. And the scripture says in Proverbs that you lay down with a harlot, you're making your bed in hell. Mm -mm -mm. It's, your place is in hell. So uh, it looks good, but guess what? The end result is death. So it might look good to certain people. Out of the depravity of man's heart. Just something but you that's see so the movies that we watch today and people are so drawn to, to um, these demonic movies and how they, but even how people are modifying their bodies they, to oh, look like exactly these right. demonic entities with putting horns in their heads and um, just and filing their teeth and filing and their teeth and forking their tongue and things like that. To them, it is attractive. So they're going to be to a lot of people going to be very attractive. But um, no, they're coming for you too, and they they're going to sting you. <laughs> so <laughs> they say thank thank you for thank you for noticing my long thank flowing you, thank hair. You for your worship, but yeah, now yeah. But now I'm going to get you. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> so then they have the teeth as lions, mm. and the teeth as lions. If you think about a lion. It really speaks to um, uh, fierceness. Mm -hmm. You think about a lion and when a lion opens his mouth, but also um, cruelty. Because mm. the rending, the lion, when you see a lion feasting on an animal, and, um, he's just not snacking. Right. He's rending that animal and um, the fierceness, but also the cruelty of um, oh these demons. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the breastplate of iron. That invincibility. So I can see man in their, um, well, pride. not just arrogance, not just pride, but also uh, maybe we can fight them. You watched enough movies that when like aliens attack or they, get things, they get together with their, their the tanks aliens. and their guns and their machine guns and <laughs> right. their nuclear missiles and everything and say, we need to fight back. And they're going to try to fight back these things. But guess what? Guess what? These demons are invincible. So they have the breastplate of iron speaking to their invincibility. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can try to fight them all you want. Go ahead and get your Glock out of your safe or your shotgun and 
Um, yeah, it's not going to work. Um, they're invincible. Then it says the sounds of wings as chariots with many horses. And so if you ever watch the movie or um, read history or anything about um, when these armies are invading a city or coming down and you see like the dust clouds from afar off and you right. hear the sounds of the horses, it just strikes terror. And people who are not prepared or people who are not um, fully armored or um, able to withstand this onslaught. So it's going to be approaching calamity. You're going to hear them oh, before man. you see them. So it's going to be like an army invading and coming down the street and coming down the avenue. And you and know it's coming. Come, and you know it's coming and you cannot get Because keep in mind, they're also fast right, right, right. and strong. Right. And so when they're going to catch up, you can try to outrun them. Um, the Olympic athletes can't outrun them. Your motorcycle can't outrun them. Your car, your jet plane, whatever you have, will not outrun them. They will catch you. And you will hear the approaching calamity and they're going to tear you up. They're going to get at you. Um, when I think about the sound of, um, of chariots and horses caught striking fear in the hearts of man, that makes me think about the lepers who were outside the city mm -hmm. and the Syrian army where they were, they were starving the Israelites and uh, you know, there was a, a dearth going on in, in the, inside the city and they were, they were pretty much starving them to death by mm -hmm. forming a circle outside of the wall. And what happened was there were lepers that were sitting outside saying, why well, sit here till we die? If we sit here, we're going to die. If we go in there, we're going to die because there's a famine and we have mm -hmm. leprosy. But maybe if we go to the Syrians, maybe they'll have mercy or they'll kill us because we have leprosy. So they began to move. And the scripture says as they began to move towards the Syrian army that the Syrian army heard the sound of horses and chariots. And it struck such fear in the hearts of the Syrian army that they began. They said, oh, oh they've hired the Egyptians to come against us. Mm -hmm. This is just from the sound of four of lepers that were dying they heard the sound of a chariot, chariots and armies uh, coming at them, and they left. All of the food left, all of their treasure left, all their clothes because of the sound. Terrified an entire army. And, and also, this also makes me think of, um, when I think of a loud sound, sometimes those can be disorienting. Sometimes, you know, when you hear these sounds, the anxiety of what's about to happen coupled with just the disorientation of not knowing from where it's coming because the sound is surrounding you is enough to make men's heart fail for fear. Um, so when you see uh, that these creatures are coming and their wings make the sound that will strike heart, fear in the hearts of men and disorient them because the sound will be all around them and they're not knowing when the next sting from where it's coming. Is it coming from the back? Is it coming from above me? This is enough literally to make men pass out and just try to die and they can't. And what makes it even worse because we're in 2020 and the advent of technology. Oh my oh, goodness. Oh, YouTube videos and social media oh, posts God, and live TV and real time and because... Um, that from where they we don't know where this abyss is, That's but right. when it opens up, it's going to open up in one area and then it's going to spread out all over the world. So you can imagine the immediate people, people seeing the immediate people come and hearing about it and hearing them approaching and people got their phones out saying, y'all, do y'all hear that? And so you can imagine after watching it, mm -hmm. that is on repeat oh and it went God. viral. And you know how we are when things go viral, everybody's watching it over and over again. And then finally, it comes to your neighborhood. And you hear it coming. Oh, my goodness. What are you going to do? You're going to try to hide. They're going to catch you. You're going to try to run. They're going to catch you. Oh, they got, you're going to try to do whatever it takes. They're going to get you. And if you are not sealed by God, they are going to get you. Because the last part of the description is they have the tails like scorpions. And that speaks to the destructive power on man. Mm -hmm. That man who is destructive in his own right, right, there's something that is greater than man that is even more destructive. And it's just going to literally disrupt the entire one world government, one world religion, one world economy, one, new, world, new world order. It's going to completely disrupt it where people are not going to want to what? Mm -hmm. You can't buy or sell without the bar, but people are not going to leave their house to buy or sell. So everything's going to come to a standstill for five months. Mm -hmm. And they're still going to get you. <laughs> and you're still going to want to die. And the only ones that are going to get a reprieve for five months are the saints. Praise God. So the saints who are under heavy persecution, yep. who are being martyred for their belief, are literally going to be able 
to have this reprieve, this almost this revival, this refreshing of time for five months where everybody who is not sealed by God is just going to be in absolute agony for five months. Still the mercy of God. Amen. Still the mercy Amen. of God. Amen. Amen. So now let's go to verse 11. Verse 11 says, And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue his name is Apollyon. Okay, so um, they're not just, uh, again, not mindless. We know they're intelligent, but they still have a leader because there is a hierarchy even in mm -hmm. um, the kingdom of Satan. Absolutely. Even in the king. So you have general, you, the Bible says that you have power, principalities, powers, 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 spiritual wickedness right. at high places, rulers, right. rulers and wickedness at high places. So, so you know there's a hierarchy. You know there's generals and captains and sergeants. If you think of like an um, army or the military, but there is one that is a king. He rules over them. And so he's literally directing them where to go. And, and the scripture says that um, his name is Abaddon. Mm -hmm. I always say Abaddon, but I like Abaddon sounds better for me, potato, potato. Um, but Abaddon and in the Hebrew tongue, but also in the Greek tongue, is Apollyon, which means destroyer or destruction. Mm -hmm. Abaddon or Apollyon meaning destroyer. And so this individual, this fallen angel, mm -hmm. and again, there's a debate whether this is Satan as well. Um, I personally believe this is one of the fallen ones, one of the chief fallen ones that have been locked in the abyss for the time of judgment. And he's going to be released. And not only are these these locust-like demons coming out, but there is a leader that's going to come out too. And he's going to lead and it's going to be a directed assault. Given the uh, only able to do what God allows, but it will be a directed assault with mass effect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they won't be able to kill man. They will only be able to cause agony and destruction and um, destroy uh, man's sensibility, mm -hmm. man's faith in himself. Man's faith in the system, man's faith in the Antichrist, man's faith that is not faith in God. And the scripture comes to me that says, some boast in chariots, uh, some, some boast in horses. horses, but we will what? Trust in yeah. the name of the Lord. We boast in God. So man who is boasting in his achievements, his accomplishments, and thumbing his nose at God and saying, we got this. These demons are going to go out and they're going to be like, okay, even though we really like y'all um, rejecting God. We have an assignment and we're going to um, wreak havoc on you because we still hate you even though you don't want to serve God. Mm -hmm. So that is verses one, um, 1 through 11. This is the fifth trumpet. So now let's shift over in verse 12. Verse 12 says this. One woe is passed. One just, woe. That's just one woe because the angel said woe, 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 right? Woe, woe, woe. That's just one woe that has passed. And behold, there come Two woes more hereafter. So we're going to deal with the fifth and sixth, the one woe and the two woe. We get down to the third woe later in our study. But this first woe is past. Mm -hmm. Five months, one of the biggest woes. But now we're going to get to the next woe. Uh -huh. So let's get to start at verse 13. I hope you have your Bibles hang and you're taking there. these good notes. Just hang in there. Help somebody. Tell somebody Tell about somebody Jesus. Tell somebody about this. Tell somebody They're gonna about, need it. And about <laughs> Jesus so they don't have to go through. Amen. Here it is. And, uh, and verse 13 says, And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. Mm -hmm. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. So here it is now. Here's the second word or the sixth trumpet that is sound. Now, again, remember we were talking about these angels were, which were bound in the abyss. So mm -hmm. one part of the abyss is opened up and you have... Abaddon and all these locust type demons coming out. But then there are four mighty fallen angels that are bound in the Euphrates. So again, here is in the earth. This is physically. You have in, we have demons who are bound in our physical earth. You won't find them. So people can dig all they want. Mm. They can't get to them. So here is four angels, fallen ones, watchers, 
whatever you want to call them, fallen angels, sons of God, who are bound in the great Euphrates. Mm. And these four are some serious jokers. My, my, my. And here it is. They get released, and it's now another trumpet or another word, woe, that is going to come on the earth. Mm -hmm. So, um, again, these are, they're bound in the Euphrates, and what they're going to do is they're going to wreak some havoc. So let's go um, into verse uh, 16. Verse 16 says, And the number of the army of the, of the horsemen were 200,000, and I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire, and of jacinth, and of brimstone. And the head of the horses was the head of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. And by these three was the third of the men killed by fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails, for their tails were like unto serpents and had heads, and with them they do hurt. And the rest of the men which are not killed by these Actually, plagues. let's stop right there. So we're going to stop at verse 19, and then we're going to go to 20 and 21. So um, these four, um, I will call them again like generals, mm -hmm. and the demonic army, um, and Satan's army, and they have given power. They're calling up now a demonic horde of 200 million. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting that these locust demons, they're swarming, and they're coming out of the abyss, and they're going out, and they're hitting all mankind, and they're going out, and we don't, it, he doesn't even give a number to them. But it's interesting that he actually gives a number, he attempts to give a number, a counted number of these demons that are going to come out. Now, you thought that the locust demons were bad. And as we described them, that alone, and as you saw the images, that alone would be, okay, that's enough. Right. Well, here it is, the first woe, here's the second woe. Now there's a whole nother fresh horde of demons who look even are more powerful and more destructive than the previous trumpet, the fifth trumpet, because these cause a third of mankind to die. So the first woe, five months, you can't seek death, we sting you. It's bad enough to be stung again. Um, it's painful, it is distressing, it is just disruptive, it's destructive. But now, uh, it's bad enough I got through that after five months. Now here's the next trumpet, but this is going to kill a third of mankind. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about probably 1.7 billion or a billion to a point, depending on how many, what the population is on earth. Mm -hmm. We know that many have been dying, millions and billions, right. a third um, during the sealed, um, ju uh, the sealed judgments. And then now here's another third of mankind. So we're talking about a billion dying here, a billion dying there. That's mass scale. So this, this demonic cord is going out. And, um, and if you just look at the description of them, um, and it said they were um, uh, on uh, horses in the vision, and they who sat on them had breastplates of fire. So not breastplates of iron, but breastplates of fire. That and of jacinths and brimstone, and they, I mean, I'm a big fantasy sci-fi fan. I love the imagery in this book. I love it because it just in my mind's eye tells me that the things that we look at in the movies are not really that far-fetched. So I'm kind of wondering that these people who come up with these ideas Tapping that they just something. actually tap into the demon spoke to them, or they were reading the Bible and said. Oh, that's really good. Um, breastplates of fire and jacinth and brimstone and the heads of, of the horses were heads of lions. And these things are vicious. Yeah. These things are, um, and they're spewing fire and brimstone and smoke out of their mouth and it kills a third of mankind. I have to pause right there because the first trumpet, was, I mean the fifth trumpet was pretty bad. The sixth trumpet is even worse. It's even worse. And which kind of saddens me after that, though, it says, and let's go to verse 20. Verse 20 says, And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils, and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk, Neither repented they of their murders, 
nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. So those who survived still wouldn't still repent. Wouldn't um, they wouldn't repent. They would not repent. And, and, and it's interesting because this is clearly a judgment on mankind because of the deeds of mankind. Um, there was judgments on the earth that caused man to like really recognize that God is doing something right. and he's speaking to them. But now God's saying, I really have to judge the wickedness and the sin of the earth in these fifth and sixth judgment, fifth and sixth trumpet judgments. Because um, very interesting, these four um, ones that abound in the U river Euphrates. If you keep in mind, if you just look at a geographical map, the U river Euphrates flows through um, Iraq and Syria. Mm -hmm. And so we know that they're going to come up out of this area and they're going to focus their attention by command by God to kind of wreak havoc in, in that, that general area, area where it's going to kind of spread out. So that area, which is Iraq and Syria, um, more specifically is the eastern boundary of the Israeli um, land. Now, I, I have to bring this up because people think that the people of Israel or the current Jews that are in Israel are um, occupiers or are illegitimate, illegitimate state or God is, um, n doesn't have a covenant with them anymore. And so here we see that now God's going to judge because y'all took his land. It's God's land, number one. Jerusalem is his city. His he name is on Jerusalem. He said, I put my name on it and that's my city and I've given it to my people based on my covenant to Abraham. So here it is. This is their land. Mm -hmm. But also this is the Roman Empire and we're going to talk about it later in Revelation how this um, new world order is going to come out and this Antichrist is going to come out of this old or the new Roman Empire or this old revised Roman Empire or resurrected Roman Empire because we know in that area Iraq is going to be the seat of power for the Antichrist or the new Babylon that he's going to build. So he's going to build rebuild Babylon again. We know that it was built during the Tower of Babel by mm -hmm. Nimrod. And that was destroyed. And then uh, Nebuchadnezzar rebuilt it again. And that was destroyed. And so for some reason, this whole Babylon thing is amazing. That the Antichrist is going to try to do it again. That's how we know that Satan was... Um, behind it doing the Tower of Babel That's with Nimrod. Right. He behind. was behind it with Nebuchadnezzar and he's going to be behind it with the Antichrist trying to do the same thing over and over looking for a different result. That is the definition of insanity. Yeah, insanity. And so here it is. This is the seat of power the, um, of the Antichrist. This is Babylon, but this is God's land. This is the children of Israel's land. This is the Jews' land. And because you took the land, I'm going to judge. And if when we get later in the chapters, you'll see the destruction of Babylon. So it starts with these four fallen ones wreaking havoc in that land, in that area. And, and you know, it's just a, a mass destruction. <laughs> that's, and the name of, that's the name of the chapter. Just mass destruction. So, um, but also the um, other purpose, like I said, well, actually the first purpose, just wanted to give you some, some scriptures um, because God, God is judging those who have oppressed Israel. Mm -hmm. Because at this time now, you're going to start seeing the Antichrist really um, go against Israel and Israel go against the Antichrist. And you're going to see how he's going to, um, you know, renege on the treaty. And he's, you're going to start seeing these things that um, are spoke of and both Ezekiel and then Daniel and then Revelation, how the Antichrist is going to flip on them now and he's going to really show his true colors. And so um, when I say this is God's land or this is the children of Israel's land, let's jump all the way back to Genesis, the 15th chapter, verse 18. And this is the covenant that he said to Abraham. He said, on the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram saying to your descendants, I have given this land from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. So what is the river of Egypt? That's the Nile. Mm -hmm. Stretching all the way up to, not the Jordan, because we kind of limit them at the Jordan. No, that land stretched all, all the way, way out to, to the river Euphrates. And That's Abram right. is looking out and he's in Canaan. And he's seeing all this land. And God is saying, this is what I'm going to give to your descendants. And then he ratifies or he reemphasizes it in Deuteronomy 11, 11 and 24, right. where he says, Every place on which the sole of your foot treads shall be yours, 
from the wilderness and Lebanon, from the river, the river Euphrates, even to the Western Sea shall be your territory. Right. So all the way up it's to all, the river Euphrates. So when he releases these demons, That's right. he's like, look, get them folk. So if you have an issue with Israel and their land that they're in right now, and that's only a small portion of the land that God gave to them. Be very careful because God, he said, I will bless those who bless you. That's right. And I will curse those who curse you. So we're going to see a, 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 a world government that is going to oppress, not only oppress Israel, but, you know, keep them from getting the land that God has promised them. That's right. And so there will be judgment that is going to be rained down on those people. The enemy has always attempted to oppress God's people because that's where the seed, that's mm -hmm. where righteousness is coming from. And so all the way back when we talk about um, oppression and how uh, the people have oppressed God's people in Exodus, um, and all the way back in Exodus during the plagues, mm -hmm. this is this is judgment. He said, listen, I need you to release my people so they can come out here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to worship me for the, just in the wilderness. Let them do it. But people have always oppressed, always oppressed God's people. So then if you go a little farther, you'll see in Psalm something that God still holds today. Psalm 103 verse 6 says, The Lord executes righteousness and mm -hmm. justice for all who are oppressed. So for his people Israel, for you, for me, whoever is being oppressed, God takes notice when people who are attempting to serve him and who mm -hmm. he has put mm -hmm. his stamp and his seal upon are being oppressed. God will judge and God will answer uh, those people who are oppressing. So God is not an oppressor, even mm -hmm. though we see him judging. This is righteous judgment mm -hmm. that we see. He's mm -hmm. pouring out righteous judgment for people who have earned their wages. Because mm -hmm. the wages of sin is death. death. But also this judgment, when you oppress his people, he is going to give you your wages. So this land right that pastor's talking about rightly, does, rightly, rightly belongs to Israel and anybody absolutely anybody and i know this is going to make some people mad anybody who has a problem with that automatically has a problem with god amen amen so uh be very careful uh if if you call yourself a christian understand that um you, if you don't want god to break his covenant with you don't assume that he has broken this covenant, covenant with, israel. with israel israel his people because of his covenant to abraham abraham stayed righteous mm-hmm Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He didn't lose his righteousness. Mm -mm. So if God made that covenant with Abraham, who stayed righteous, because the Bible said by faith, that's right, he because he believed he was counted for righteousness, and he believed all the way to the end. That's right. And God honored his covenant with Abraham by blessing Abraham's seed. Mm -hmm. So he's not going to take that away from Abraham. And so many people think that God is reneged on this covenant because Israel has sinned. He said, no, there will always be a remnant. That's right. And it's not just the Messianic Jews. That's right. Because the time of Jacob's troubles is for the salvation of, of the Israel, of right. the Jews, That's of right. God, of, of Abraham's seed. Of, and, and we're just blessed. I don't mind being a Gentile. Praise God. Because I, I still get the same favors so the and the benefit. same benefits and the same inheritance <laughs> Jesus of Christ. the Jews through Jesus Christ, That's who right. was a Jew. Jew. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's very important um, if you got some some anti-Semitic views, um, you, you need to deal with that exactly. because um, these are God's people. And you see, even in Revelation, when he is this a time of Jacob's troubles, he's also judging those who oppress Israel. That's right. So, but then there's another purpose of this judgment. I always call it the purpose of judgment one, and this purpose of judgment, the second purpose of this judgment is because people refuse, still refuse to repent of their sins. Now, it will be interesting after the five months of torture, these are not sealed by God, that somebody would say, you know what, I need to get it right. <laughs> but because men's deeds are so evil and his deeds are so wicked and his heart is so wicked, that the Bible says they still would not repent. And it lists all the things of what they would not repent of. And so I kind of put them in some wonderful categories. Uh, and then I'll give a scripture and we can kind of talk about it uh, to conclude our Bible study uh, of chapter 9. Uh, there was occultism. Mm -hmm. There was idolatry. There was murder. There was sex, drugs, 
rock and roll. <laughs> and it said theft. So even if you weren't oh. worshiping demons, worshiping idols, murdering somebody, engaging in fornication or homosexuality or whatever bestiality or whatever you call it or drugs, have you stolen something lately? This can go so many ways. So 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10 says this, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. So these people are in engaging in all these things. And after these two trumpets, they still wouldn't repent. They would not say, yes, Lord. So um, before we go into it, because I know you want to talk about the cultism and the witchcraft and things like that. But before we go into it, um, I, I just really need to um, point out something. Um, tragedy doesn't draw you to Christ. It is your heart desiring to be made right. That will draw you. The Holy Spirit will draw you and say, do you want to be made whole? Do you want to be made right? If you don't allow him to touch your heart, a car accident, a tragedy, these things will not say. I remember growing up saying, uh, before I gave my life to Christ and raised in the church and knew what was right and was raised the right way, PK kid, um, but was not saved. I did not um, serve Jesus Christ. He was not my Lord. And I remember even saying in my mind, um, if I get into a car accident mm -hmm. or something tragic, um, then I'll give my life to Christ. I That's thank God. A dangerous game. That's a dangerous game. That's playing <laughs> dice with weighted with dice your <laughs> with your life. That that's not that that's not smart. And it's a real We've thing. All done it, though. It, it's a real thing. And you're waiting for that last thing mm -hmm. to do or that last thing to shake you up. I should say, until you give your life to Christ. Well, here it is. It was a whole lot of shaking going on. Right. And people still would not repent of it. some of the most vile sins that people can engage in. So um, let's first talk about it in um, the few short moments that we have. Um, occultism is going to be running rampant during this time. We see an explosion of that right now. Mm -hmm. We really do. I don't believe that there's an accident that when you look at the movies and you look at some of the things that are in entertainment and some of the things that come across your feed uh, for your social media, much of that is occultism, is new age spiritualism. It is another spin on satanic practices that has been mainstreamed for us be, uh, to make them seem less mm -hmm. threatening and less, um, less, less satanic, less dangerous, mm -hmm. but they are still, they have the same purpose. They still have the same, if it has the same origin, it has the same purpose and it has the same power, no matter how you dress it up and make it look nice. And occultism is something that you see now. Um, uh, my daughter was telling me in the car the other day um, that now there's this little witch game that people are playing where you have to write the name of the person that you like and that you want to be with. You write their name 365 times and then you chant the name and oh yes she just told me this and then you chant the name and as you chant the name the heart of the person will begin to turn towards you the more you chant and channel the name do you hear this now this is what's going on in high schools and middle schools um that uh people are tapping into something they see it and they want this illegitimate power and that's what occultism is mm -hmm. is wanting this illegitimate power and when we see these people in, in in the book of revelation they have been so steeped in this illegitimate power mm -hmm. and wanting to get uh their own way uh that they uh, are still refusing to repent from that even though they see the judgments um occultism and witchcraft have you're going to find them in three it's going to come in three different categories you're going to see manipulators. Manipulation is a part of occultism because mm -hmm. you're trying to manipulate somebody else's or something's will to fit your own. D uh, domination, whenever you see uh, very powerful people dominating and intimidating, that is definitely a part of what the occultic life is about. It's about asserting power and showing mm -hmm. you this illegitimate power. And then you have rebellion. And so all three of those you're going to find 
you're really going to find those in the uh, in the Ten Commandments. And so when you see that commandment that says honor your father and mother, mm -hmm. and we see little things like that, it's hinting. Be careful because rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, mm -hmm. and it says stubbornness is as idolatry. Mm -hmm. So when you are tapping into these things and tarot cards and Ouija boards and seeing Reverend so and so, and you know they ain't no <laughs> Reverend, you know you know these people are witches. They work mm -hmm. in roots. And roots are real. I have seen them with my own eyes. I know what they do. I know what they can do. You have people who are are, are still stuck in this horoscope. Still, we we got a little bit of time left. You still doing yoga? Mm -hmm. I know they tell Eastern you about the, mysticism. It's Eastern mysticism. The poses mm -hmm. are worship poses to a deity, mm -hmm. and these deities, if you do the searches on them, are horrifying and they're terrifying, and they are anti-Christian, anti-God. And so even though they have these health benefits, everything you see in occultism has a measure of benefit, outward benefit. To suck you in. To bring you in. But once you get your spirit mm -hmm. wide open to this stuff, it makes you resistant to God. It makes you mm -hmm. resistant to repentance. And you wonder why you go to church and you can't feel nothing after you've done yoga three times a week. You, you see what I mean? You go to church and you, and you shouting and you speaking his tongue and this ain't no tongue from God. This is something that you dreaming up or something that you're hearing because you've opened the door that makes you resistant to repentance. Uh-huh. And so you're talking about idolatry. These are these little idols that may not necessarily look, you know, you're not chanting or saying uh, spells, but they got a hook on you. They got a hold on you. And they make you neglect the responsibility of worshiping and honoring God. They make you neglect the responsibilities of your home and the mm. things that God put you in charge of. Idols send your priorities out of whack. Mm -hmm. So if something is keeping you from doing what God told you to do and you, you can't release it, it's an idol. So you have murder. You, we know what that is. Well, we, before we go to murder, go. just um, talking about idolatry uh, that just simply, um, you know, you say, like you said, you don't have a little statue in your house or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Anything that you put before God, anything that you make as a priority That's before right. God that you spend more time with. Um, some people's idol is their self. The Bible says That's that their right. men should be lovers of themselves them. more than lovers of God. So we, in the um, selfie age and the uh. social media age, I was um, listening um, to, uh, I don't know, you're telling this story about um, um, one person who, you know, if they don't get, a, when they post something, if they don't get a certain mother amount of likes and mm. um, shares and things like that, that they get depressed and they will take it down and try to redo it. And um, so yeah, that because you're I, idolatrous of yourself, that you are esteemed higher than God. Mm. You want the glory. You want the attention. Oh, you want the adoration. You want be the worship. Careful. And we see it in the outside the church, and we see it in the be church, careful. that you want the position of leadership or the position up front because you like the adoration. It is idolatry. You're serving Self. or worshiping yourself. But then we have things like it said uh, it's so interesting say of gold and silver and it just goes down the line. Like they can't talk. They can't it can't mm -hmm. walk. It can't but see. But even that gold and silver money, um cars and houses, wood. Look at that. Houses and I mean it's just we can eat because we're made to worship. Right. We easily will fall into idolatry. That's why Israel easily fell left the one true God because they idolatry is easy. It is it's so easier. Easy. And so they had the one true God. And just speak to the church right now. They knew who the one true God was, but they also wanted to cover all their bases. You can worship an organization. Yes. Mm -hmm. You can. You can be so connected to a group. Your loyalties are so caught up in the organization that if God tells you to do something, you're struggling with whether it was God or not. Be careful. Mm -hmm. Be careful, saints. We got to be careful because... Anything that builds up a wall against God and against his will, anything that puts you contra to his will and mm -hmm. contra to him is only going to be detrimental to you. And so search your heart, saints. Mm -hmm. I'm serious because pride is so subtle. Mm -hmm. But once it gets its root, it opens the door for every other vice. It opens the door for every other um, uh, dysfunction in your life. When you allow these things that are resistant, and that's what we see here at the end of the chapter. And I think it's, it's so important for us to see that it doesn't matter that the judgments are coming. They're getting stung. They're getting beat down. They're getting crushed. They're getting slain. But they can't repent because they're so steeped into these things that have built up this uh, tolerance 
for God to keep him from penetrating the heart. If you have a heart of stone, you may not even realize it. Most people that have a heart and heart don't realize it until something comes and challenges that and breaks that heart down and shows you that you need a heart of flesh. Please, saints, do not slip in to a situation that will get you missing the rapture mm -hmm. and in a situation like this. Because you're going to remember this Bible, Bible study and you're going to say, I remember hearing them tell me about times mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. And you're going to wish you had an opportunity back now, which would be right now, to give your heart to Jesus. So don't let these things come sneaking in. Don't justify occultism. You got fetishes, you got pictures, you got a lock of somebody's hair, you got blood. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. We got to get some, a lot, a lot of this ancient things that we did in the motherland that we bringing in in the name of being uh, Afrocentric. We better be careful because you're calling that you're calling things sometimes that you are not ready to receive. And you better be careful. If some things that you're using for decoration might just be, oh, that's why your house is out of order. So we have to be careful. I'm just, I don't want to go too far over here because you know I, I can do that. I'm, mm -hmm. That's just my passion. Just really looking at the spiritual realm and what keeps people off kilter and off center. Having struggled for so long personally with wondering why I'm doing certain things. And I realized that a lot of that stuff was cursed. It was a curse that I bought on myself. Mm -hmm. Reasons I would fall back into the same cycles is because I was locked into something that made me resistant to truly giving those things up. And so now I have a passion for those things to get them out of the lives of God's people. So please, we see what happens to those who are resistant to God. Don't be one of them. Release this foolishness. Release these vices. Release these ways of life and these practices that lift you up above God. Because ultimately, anything that's trying to lift itself up above God will be taken down. Amen. So as we murder... Um, you know, well, I'm not killing anybody. Well, I'm tell you something. Uh, and let me just say that. That's I hope you're still with me. Um, you know, uh, let me just mention Trump. Mm -hmm. Um, many people just hated him. That shouldn't be named among Christians. And I literally, Christians have got violently yeah. resist. I mean, hated him. I mean, use the word. I hate him. I, I hate him. That, no, you should be hating nobody. Because if you hate, you will kill. You better be careful. He said, if you hate, you already committed murder. Uh-huh, especially with your mouth. With your mouth. You see, you spoke out against them. You killed yeah, their character. Yeah. He said, you're guilty of murder. And um, then there's sex. Sexual perversion. It's not just homosexuality. He said fornicators, he said adulterers, it. He said it. homosexuals, and sodomites. So you might not consider yourself a homosexual, but you might be a sodomite. Hmm. You might be an adulterer. You might be a fornicator. None of y'all going to inherit the kingdom of God. If we, that, we will not inherit. So you can say the sinner's prayer all you want and go back to that lifestyle. Guess what? No. No, God's not pleased. No. No, he's not receiving that. You have to, when you repent, you have to turn away from it. And then there's drugs. I mean, we're living in time. They're talking about now making a federal right. legalization of mm -hmm. marijuana. I don't care if the, the country says it's okay. It's not okay. Just like cigarettes. Just like liquor. Just like strong drink, just like all the opioids and the, it's not okay. And all other kinds of witchcraft that put you under the influence of another. Because spirit. it's sorceries. It's so it opens you up to the spiritual realm that is not of God. So you can recreational marijuana or medical. It's not okay. God wants you to be pure and holy before Him. Amen. He doesn't want you to be open to spirits because I deal in the mental health field and many people, they think because of the marijuana right now, they don't just have physical, they're having full psychotic like breaks. breaks simply by smoking marijuana is supposed to be so safe. And so you have to be careful that, and, and why we're saying this, because it starts small, a little leaven, That's right. leaven a whole lump. It grows and if you justify it now, you might be the ones in the tribulation saying, I still don't want to repent because this is what I want. Mm -hmm. This is the life that I've chosen. Oh, and the scripture says that your conscience becomes seared as a hot iron, by a hot iron, which means there is no coming back. You become reprobate. And so this is why we do these Bible studies because we want to be able to, the scripture says, um, 
you know, though your sins be, let us reason together. Mm -hmm. Come, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, I will make them white as snow. Who is the I? It's Jesus Christ. He's the only one that can wash you. You can't fix it yourself. You can't get yourself together first, then serve Jesus. Come as you are, give him who you are, and let him wash you and cleanse you. And and he's faithful and just. Hallelujah. If you call on his name, he's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all filthiness of the flesh and your iniquity and your transgression. He will forgive you all in righteousness. He will throw it in the sea of forgiveness. It will be like you never did it again. But then at that point, he wants you to walk with him. That's it. He wants you to move with him. He wants your life to be committed to him. And he wants to be Adonai, Lord of your life, so that you will be rapture ready now. And you will be um, prepared for when he comes to get you in the end. Amen. Amen. So that concludes our Bible study. This is our um, trumpet judgments. Actually, there's still one One more. more. But there's going to be a nice low in chapters 10 and 11 that we're going to deal with. it Once again, see God's grace and mercy. I'm telling you. I love that with Revelation that even though things look really bad... He gives us a nice parenthesis to let us know about his love, his compassion, and his ah, mercy, yes. even during that time. So we're going to talk about that um, next week as we're continuing in this study of Revelation. We pray this has been a blessing to you. Definitely uh, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like and share our videos. Um, we love for you to like our videos because it gets out to more people who um, you may be connected to who are on YouTube, but even more importantly that you're sharing these videos to someone who will who definitely needs to hear mm-hmm. this good news. Why do we call it good news? Because there is a way of escape, Thank and God. that is through Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Let's just close in a, um, a prayer, and we'll be done. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you and we praise you for this time and how you've blessed us and opened us up more to your scriptures. And God, I just speak to that one who is still on the fence and wondering if this is true or not, if this is myth or this, if this is reality of things to come, Lord. Speak to their heart yes, so Lord. they will see that you are a God who does not lie, yes, that you are true to your word and that you said these things will happen because you've already had it written for us to read. God, touch their heart that they will give their life fully to you and that they will be rapture ready. I lift up every believer, oh God, that you will keep them until that day where you come and call us up and catch us up in the air. Or if we leave by way of death, that we will be absent from the body, but present with you, oh Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Take care. To you I give the honor, to you I give the glory.